A spacecraft surveying an icy moon of Jupiter makes a shocking discovery. An entire world covered with ice, but it's only the beginning. Something is stirring beneath the frozen surface of the world we call Ganymede. Long, ribbon-like creatures, predators coming right up behind them and snap. June 1996. NASA's Galileo spacecraft is six months into its exploration of the Jupiter system. As it passes Jupiter, its electronic gaze turns to one of the gas giant's ice-covered moons, Ganymede. The probe's magnetic readings reveal something totally unexpected. An entire world covered with ice. But underneath that ice, an ocean. That ocean contains more water than the Pacific, despite the fact that Ganymede is smaller than the Earth. The discovery raises excitement among scientists worldwide. Whenever you discover water on another planet, the first thing you think of is life. How could there not be extensive life in that big ocean? But if life exists in the depths of Ganymede's seas, it faces many challenges. Ganymede has oceans, but they're not like the oceans on Earth. Perhaps the greatest challenge life there would face is the thick ice that covers the water. Ganymede's a different world. If we imagine the habitat on Ganymede, it's going to be a thick layer of ice. Too much ice at the top for sunlight to get down. Pitch black, there's no sunlight. It's freezing cold and there's no oxygen. How can life possibly thrive? For nearly 20 years after the Galileo probe's first scans, scientists believe Ganymede cannot support life. Then, in 2014, an astonishing discovery in Antarctica changes everything. Microbiologist Jill McCookie is exploring what is perhaps the most bizarre feature of the frozen landscape, a place called Blood Falls. You're on this craggy, crazy ice cover, and then it just it takes your breath away. Jill discovers that the falls hold a dark secret. This unique little feature of Blood Falls was really a window into a subsurface world that was much deeper and that we couldn't see at the surface. Scientists discovered liquid water buried beneath the ice. The subsurface oceans are deep beneath the glacier, where there is no sunlight and temperatures are deadly cold. Analysis of samples from the icy ocean reveals something shocking. I looked at the samples under the microscope and there were cells there. A whole little world uh, just in this drop of brine. Even though it's pitch black, there's no sunlight, there's no oxygen and it's freezing cold. They found 17 different kinds of microbe living in this extreme environment. The discovery prompts scientists to question how life can exist in such extreme conditions. At Blood Falls in Antarctica, living things have found a, a, another way of sustaining themselves. They use minerals, sulfates, to react with iron, and it's that iron that produces this blood red color. And they essentially feed themselves on, on minerals. The revelation that life can exist with no obvious food source in a dark ocean buried beneath the ice has stunning implications for Ganymede. So what we're asking ourselves is, is could these, these oceans on Ganymede be full of microbes, just like at Blood Falls? Maybe because I study life in Antarctica, I'm more of an optimist about the ability of life to survive harsh conditions. Surprisingly, Ganymede's deepest waters offer the best hope for finding life. This is a world that has oceans and layers. It has ice, water, ice, water, ice, water. It looks like a striped cake. To have life, you really want rocks and water together. 
because they produce the elements that living things need. Where you want to look for life is going to be in that last ocean level because it's in contact with rock. So if we're looking for life on Ganymede, we're going all the way to the bottom. With all the elements necessary for life present, there is good reason to hope that the ice water of Ganymede could be home to more than just microbes. We could go to Ganymede expecting only simple life, but I think we should keep our eyes open just in case there's something more interesting as well. It's had four and a half billion years to evolve. There could be long, ribbon-like creatures, 30 meters long, two meters wide, moving across the bottom. Predators coming right up behind him, sensing these trails moving and snap. Whatever form life takes on Ganymede, we could encounter it within the next decade. So the next step is the JUICE mission, which is specifically designed to go and study those oceans of the icy moons of Jupiter. The truth is, there could be no limit to the life that lives on Ganymede. It's really up to us to go investigate and find out. Still to come, cameras on the International Space Station capture a laser beam striking dangerously close. It looks a little like a Star Wars death ray. If this is true, then science fiction would become overnight science fact. The cameras on the International Space Station reveal an energy beam streaking down towards Earth. Looks like somebody fired phasers. The images cause global excitement. Where does the beam hit? What's the target? December 5th, 2014. The crew of the International Space Station is conducting an experiment to study the behavior of fire in microgravity. But something else is about to capture the world's attention. Thousands of people watching the live video feed from the ISS see something extraordinary happening outside the space station. Something that looks like a laser beam fires into space. This is like something out of the movies. The remarkable footage poses a number of questions. Where does the beam hit? What's the target? NASA does not comment on the unusual phenomenon. Of course it goes viral on the internet, it's on Facebook, it's on YouTube, and everyone has their own idea of what's going on here. 